Which one of these is not like the other? <laughs> Believe it or not, these three contactors that look exactly the same are very different. Want to know what it is? Stick around and find out. Hey everybody, this is Joe Joe the HVAC man and today I'm hoping to save you some trouble, okay? Um, contactors and relays. Well, a lot of times they look exactly the same, but guess what? They're not. So let's play a game and find out if you can tell me what contactor differences there are. So here's your contactor, right? And we've got a cover on it. Just your basic normal contactor. Okay? Now, what I want to do is we're going to play a little game. I want you to tell me if you can find the, the contactor. So watch this. Let's play our little game. And I'm going to cover it up. We'll come back out here a little bit. See my messy desk. <laughs> a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. It's not as easy as it looks. All right, here we go. So, okay, so there's the contact. All right, everybody follow. You ready? I'm going to do this real quick. I'm good at this. All right, here we go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Aha. All right, which one is it? Is it under this one? This one? Or this one? But that, that, that one, huh? You sure? You sure it's this one? Okay. Hey, look at there. You're right. Sure enough, that's exactly the one we had. That way, see, just to prove, see, there's nothing under here. Oh, wait a minute. There is, there is a contactor under there. Wait. What do you think? Think I got one out of there? Oh, look at there. Why in the world do I have three identical contactors? Well, today I'm going to show you they're not, okay? They're made the same. They work the same, but they're not the same. So what is a big difference between this one, this one, and this one? Well, let's see. Let me spread these out here for a minute. And let's zoom in. And so here is our 24 volt or control voltage, right? Here's our high voltage. So the way a contactor works in general is we're going to put our control voltage here and here. Now some of them have connections all on just one side, but this goes to your coil which is inside the contactor here so we apply control voltage to the contactor and we got high voltage coming in and going out so this is a set of contacts and all they do i'll turn the light on here for you see they just make contact pretty straightforward get a little more close up there for you see so when these pull down they make contact and then the power goes from here to here it's like a bridge so we put control voltage it pulls this down makes contact passes voltage through so this is a power passing part of the contactor and then the coil here which we energize to pull it in is power consuming okay now, you look at this contactor. We'll take its cover off. See what's different about it. Nothing. It's exactly the same. Hmm. All right. How about the other one?
same thing. Hmm. All right. Let's talk about these. What is the difference? Well, a very, very important difference here. I'm going to get that cover back on there. It killed me. All right, here we go. <laughs> okay. So, what's the difference? Well, look at all this information we got on this cover. Okay, we got the voltage that we can pass through it at what current we can pass through it. Okay. We also have four motors, or for motors here, we can do 30 amps which is uh, like an inductive motor. And then we have here straight resistive um, motor uh, loads, which would be like heat strips, okay? So we can do pull 30 amps through this contactor, 40 amps if it is a electric heater or just um, a non-inductive load, something that doesn't pull starting amps, okay? Now, how about this one? Well, okay. Same thing. And how about this one? Ha. Same thing. So what is the difference? I know some of you are screaming at me, telling me already. But look right here. Look at the coil voltage on this thing. This is a 24-volt coil. So you put 24 volts to the sides here. That's control voltage. And it'll pull this in and work. Well, what about this one? This is a 120 volt coil, 110 to 120. You put 24 volts on these coils and it won't pull it in. And it looks exactly the same. There is no physical difference between these two. Same, same ratings, same voltages going through it. The coil is the difference. And look at this one. That is a 208, 240 volt control voltage, right? Wow. So what would happen if I went to a piece of equipment and I quickly jumped in there and pulled out the contactor because it was bad? Now, the reason I say it's bad is you go there and it's not pulling in or you saw it was burned up or whatever. And so you kill the power of the unit Yanked out that trans, uh, yanked out that contactor, and you put this one in in its place, or you worse, put this one in its place, and you put control wires back on there, power that bad boy up. What's going to happen? <laughs> that thing's going to blow up. Well, it'll catch on fire. Not that I've ever done that, but I saw somebody on YouTube do it. Yep, eleven thirty at night, nineteen ninety. Uh, seven. Yep, working on an old cooler. It was a 240 volt system all the way through. Contactor went out. It wasn't pulling in. And uh, I whipped around there. I did not check the control voltage going to the contactor. I saw that it was burned up. And I, and I remember it was like, it was, all this was just all burned up. It didn't have a top cover. Some of them have information down here on the side to tell you what the coil voltage is. Some manufacturers are nice to put it nice and bold, but most of them is just stuck down there with a whole bunch of other little numbers, okay? So I reached in there, grabbed me another contactor, looked just like the one I pulled out, put it in, put 240 volts to my 24-volt coil contactor, and it was a nice blue ball of fire for about a second. And Lee say it didn't work again. And I was stuck. I did not have, I had never seen a 240 volt coil contactor before. That a whole cooler was 240 volts. Stop. Uh, crazy, right? So be sure you pay attention to what the control voltage rating is on your contactor. And if for some reason you take this cover off to inspect, you know, and see how it looks, put the cover back on. In this case, this manufacturer 
puts all their information on that cover. Well, oh, got out of focus. And let me get focused here real quick, fellas. There we go. Okay. So if you don't put that cover back on, then the next guy will not know the voltage it should be unless, of course, he can get it powered up and try the control voltage. But let's say the unit's down and it blew a big fuse and he saw the contactor was also messed up. So he goes and grabs a contactor, puts it in there, doesn't check to see if it's 24 volts or 240 volts and has trouble. Put the cover back on there. It's also an arc safe preventer and it keeps the bugs out of the contactor. Number one reason for these jokers failing is ants get up inside the contacts and jam them all the way up. So that's another nice thing about these cover types of contactors is they uh, help prevent that from happening. Not that they can't get in there, but it's a good preventer. So that's contactors. What about relays? Well, here we go. I'll spare you the game. All these relays here are the same looking, right? Same type, okay? This right here is a double pole, double throw relay. You zoom in right here, and you can see that one is normally closed to two, and one is normally open to three. And here we've got the bottom one. This right here is number four, normally closed to number five, and normally open to number six. Here is where we put our control voltage on the sides here. Okay, now this one you can see the coil, it's kind of wrapped up, but that's the coil that we energize to make this relay open and close. Other than that, these guys are all the same as far as how they work and how they look. The only difference is the information you're going to find on the side here. And where, oh where, is a coil voltage on this one. <laughs> it is really, really buried, okay? Look at all this stuff. I would expect it to be right here in big, bold, black letters. Wouldn't that be nice? Nope. It's all the way down here, buried in the small, 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 small print. So, <laughs> there you go. See that? That is all you got. It is little bitty tiny coil, 208, 240 volts. See if that helps me. Nope, lighting was bad. How about this one? Look at that. Coil, 120 volts. Coil, 24 volts. So here you go. You got three relays that look exactly the same. They do exactly the same thing, except they are three different control voltages. So there you go. Didn't get into really how you could use all these. That could be another class. But just to save you the misery of putting the wrong contactor or wrong relay back on the wrong control voltage, burning up the one you just put on there, at 1130 at night and of course you don't have one on your truck to replace it. Right? Pay attention. Now the boxes are all clearly labeled. Here. I'll show you. The box, no problem. See it coils right on the box. But often, I don't know about you guys, but most of my parts were not in the box. Uh, they were sitting out on a shelf when I got it and ran um, or sometimes you know the box got damaged and so I got the part but you know just pay close attention and of course if you come to the unit and it's got an existing one take a look and see what that voltage is okay I hope that helps you have a great day and I'll talk to you again another time